What I want to try to do during uh, my 20 minutes is uh, run through what I think academia has going for it. And believe me, as a member of the professoriate, that's a question I ask myself more or less daily. Uh, and then to uh, touch lightly uh, on some discovery, development, and post-licentia studies, which I think academia has had a hand in. And I'll finish up, finally, uh, by some reflections on partnership. Um, so these are the sorts of things that I think academia has going for it, and I just propose to run through them uh, one after a time, particularly wide diversity with um, a great deal of uh, opinion-leading expertise. In the case of my own institution, an awful lot of that expertise is based in disease-endemic countries, and you see Malcolm Molyneux uh, somewhat sweatily uh, toiling <laughs> over his patients uh, in the uh, Blantyre Welcome Trust uh, unit here. But I think it's uh, pretty important to reflect also that the guys and gals who are based in disease endemic countries are also able to constantly undertake an upstream downstream discussion with other diverse people who are interested in the same sort of thing. Chemists, pharmacologists, public health people, social scientists. And I think the importance of that is that then the target product profile, the, the, the crisp uh, and no place to hide definition of what it is you want a drug to do can be developed uh, all the better. I think it's also important to note that academia has an implicit commitment to research capacity development. We must do because we teach and we nurture talent and we try if we're a university to retain it, often by uh, uh, taking away passports, if at all possible. <laughs> and we do this, of course, in the developed world, and I've illustrated here the uh, Wellcome Trust clinical PhD program that Mark Walport has been um, uh, uh, developing over the course of the last few years. It's relevant to note that the programs both at the London School and also the University of Liverpool are focused entirely upon global health. But we don't just do it in the developed world. Um, it's important that we should also be paying a great deal of attention to capacity development in Africa especially. And you will also have noticed another of Mark Walport's brain children, the um, North-South Partnerships, which were launched in the course of the summer, um, which produced such talent. I mean, he was talented to begin with, but a little bit of help didn't do any harm. Such people as Alexi and Zila, uh, who won the EDCT prize, e EDCTP prize in 2009. It's also the case that academia no longer is the peaceful groves uh, in which one can met, let one's mind wander. I'm afraid it is these days red in tooth and claw and remarkably Darwinian. Uh, it is a hotbed uh, where uh, one is fairly swiftly swept away, if uh, not competitive. The research assessment exercise shortly to be followed by the REF, Research Excellence Framework, in the UK are just examples that come from my own country, but other countries do the same. We have drivers as well, which are different from, and I think complementary to, the pharmaceutical industry. We are driven by the need for excellent publications, by grant income, and the result of these drivers is that we're able to follow an idea for really quite long periods of time in multidisciplinary teams, even if the idea moves from malaria to tuberculosis and back again. And uh, the next example, in fact, is a good case in point. The enzyme that we're looking at here is relevant to TB2, so uh, we're actually exploring two paths. So with that sort of uh, introductory spiel, I'll move on to uh, uh, drug discovery and one particular drug discovery uh, uh, project which has its roots in genome sequencing. Um, and uh, this is a project by Steve Ward, who's in the audience here, uh, and also by Giancarlo Biagini uh, and uh, Paul O'Neill. Hasn't grown out of the MRC genomics hub, but nonetheless uh, now is able to lean upon it. 
So this particular enzyme is one of the series of, uh, res of respiration uh, chain in the uh, mitochondrion of the parasite. It's shown now to be an essential parasite enzyme and very promisingly is absent from the human host. So as a target, it certainly has promise. There's potential value to this as a target in chemotherapy, in prophylaxis, and also in eradication because the target is to be found at all stages uh, of the human parasite. Giancarlo has been able to show that this is an essential target responsible for around about 90% of the flux through uh, this series of enzymes. And uh, HDQ, the full title of which doesn't much matter, it's a non-druggable inhibitor of the uh, target, is capable of collapsing mem membrane potential. Now, all of these things are fine and dandy, but perhaps even better than this, the enzyme is amenable to high throughput screening, and you see Steve Ward's uh, latest toy uh, here, his uh, platform at LSTM. Recombinant enzyme has been made. There's a simple uh, endpoint assay available for monitoring, um, and HITS are currently being studied by the team. A different um, approach to drug discovery was one of intelligent redesign um, of a molecule, and it's pretty much the same team as before, but joined now by Kevin Park, who is the director of our Center for Drug Safety Science. And it's a good example, this, of a project which has taken a very long time. Uh, the team has worked on this uh, on and off, pretty well off uh, uh, lately, but uh, and, uh, until that uh, rather more on, for around about 20 years, I think it would be true to say. Indeed, I myself did my thesis on amodiaquin some little bit of years ago, uh, and we see uh, amodiaquin here, a chloroquine-like molecule, but with a phenolic moiety there, which gives rise to difficulty. It's capable of spontaneously forming a quinone imine, a very nasty reactive species that can, uh, if you will, haptonate protein and uh, thereby cause idiosyncratic toxicity, particularly in the liver, but also in the bone marrow. Over 200 analogues of the amodiaquin molecule have been made uh, to attempt to avoid this particular property. And by moving the hydroxyl moiety here, um, uh, a drug which we're calling isoquin, or at least a, an investigational product, has been made cheap and uh, easy to synthesize, highly effective, and doesn't form toxic metabolites. And I'm pleased to say that we were able to get it as far as phase one.